Good afternoon, everybody. Today we are taking a look at a problem that involves a hot air balloon, which is attached to uh, a basket containing a passenger and some cargo. We are told that the total mass of that entire hot air balloon basket passenger cargo system is capital M. And we're also told that even though there is an upward lift force on the balloon, the balloon is initially accelerating downward at a rate of g over 3. And we have three tasks. Draw the free body diagram uh, for the balloon descending in the initial position. Find what the upward lift force is. And then uh, in part C, the passenger wants to change the acceleration from minus g over 3 to positive g over 2. And we need to calculate, okay, how much of the mass do we need to throw away to make that happen? So let's move on to part A. That is to draw a free body diagram for the balloon as it's descending. This is really easy. Um, I start with a very kind of generic uh, xy coordinate system in which if we move to the right, that would be positive x. If we move up, that would be positive y. The hot air balloon, passenger, cargo, blah, 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 all that. That is just represented by the dot located at the origin of the coordinate system. And let's think about the different forces that would be acting on this hot air balloon. We have the lift force that points upward. We were told about that. We don't know what the magnitude is, but we do know that it's positive. Um, I'll label that accordingly. F lift. And in the opposite direction, we should have another force that is causing the hot air balloon system to move downward. Well, that would be the weight of all that stuff. We can't ignore that. And you may notice that I am drawing um, the weight of capital M significantly larger than the lift force. That is very important. I think uh, a person who is grading this homework problem will be looking for that because it has to be larger in order for the acceleration to be uh, negative. Um, in any case, um, that's pretty much it we can actually label the acceleration off to the side too if you so choose do not attach it uh, to the origin because it's not a force you have to keep it off to the side and that would be this here and that is pretty much it for part A we are good we've got the upward lift force the downward weight of the combined system and we are indicating that it's it has a negative initial acceleration so that is part A done. What about part B? Part B says find the upward lift force in terms of the initial total weight mg. Um, a little confusing for such a short sentence but really what they're asking us to do is to use Newton's second law as you've seen it to uh, calculate what the upward lift force might be and um, we can include a subscript y here on this expression um, if you so choose or if you're required to because we're only applying Newton's second law in the up and down direction for this part so um, if you uh, go back to the free body diagram notice we only have two forces we've got the upward one and the downward one that's it so that means the sum of them has to look like this F lift um, oops, I always write the I first. I don't know why. Maybe I have dyslexia. Uh, F lift minus um, the weight of the combined system, capital M, is equal to 
MA. Now, we need to make sure that we are using the correct mass variable. And if we are looking at the acceleration of the entire system, that means we have to use capital M times the acceleration, not lowercase m. And in this case, the acceleration in the initial kind of a situation here when the uh, balloon is going downward, that would be AI. And we already know what that is. That's minus g over 3 um, right here. It says g over 3, but it's downward. So you have to be sure to include the negative in front of it, minus g over 3. So capital M minus g over 3. And our job is to isolate this variable and solve for it in terms of capital M and g. So we know that um, F lift minus the weight is what? capital MG is equal to minus capital MG over 3. Um, that's the next kind of simplified step in this calculation here. And what we want to do is bring this term over to the other side and collect like terms. And if we do that, our lift variable is equal to minus capital MG over 3 plus capital MG. Uh, if it's apparent to you what the resulting fraction would be in this addition here, that's fantastic. Uh, otherwise, you can include an additional step for your own clarity uh, by factoring out capital MG from this addition here. And we see that that results in minus one third plus 1, and we can rewrite 1 as 3 over 3, and if you take minus 1 third plus 3 over 3, you get 2 over 3. So to conclude, part B, our upward lift force is 2 thirds times the initial total weight. That's it. Capital MG times two thirds. Uh, done. Kind of mark this off here. So let's move on to the more wordy part C. The passenger notices that they are heading straight for a waterfall and they need to go up. What fraction of the total weight? must be dropped overboard so that we accelerate upward at a rate of g over 2. So if we write this in words, maybe a little less words, uh, oops, um, want to go from a equals minus g over 3, ooh, that looks a little bad, forgive me, to a equals g over 2 by smaller mass. Okay. That is basically what we are doing in some less words. <laughs> um, what I would recommend doing is let's create a whole new variable and we'll call it lowercase m. So let lowercase m equal the mass to achieve, I think that's how you spell achieve correctly, if not, forgive me, achieve uh, a equals g over 2. So we want the entire system to have an acceleration of positive g over 2. So that means the whole mass of the system has to be like lowercase m. If we incorporate that into Newton's second law, um, again, I'll kind of write the familiar form here, m a y, what do we get? Well, we have the upward lift force 
and that is actually remaining the same upward lift force remains the same from part B from the problem description so we can't forget about it and we still have the weight that pulls downward but it's not capital MG anymore it's lowercase mg. Uh, you may ask why. Well, it has to be in order for us to have a positive acceleration. We have to have a smaller weight for that negative g over 3 to turn into a positive g over 2, right? So it can't be capital M. Uh, furthermore, this applies to the right side of the equation, too. It's no longer um, capital M. Now it's lowercase m. Again, because the entire system has to have that mass in order to have this new acceleration. And the new acceleration is what? Well, that's g over 2. Okay. So um, let's do a little bit of substitution and some algebra and simplification here. So if we get the lift force from the previous slide, that's 2 thirds capital MG. Uh, it seems like that might be an issue because the capital M is here. Uh, however, we're actually going to take advantage of that in the next couple steps here. So we've got lowercase mg is equal to lowercase mg over 2. And if we add mg on both sides, we get the following. 2 thirds capital mg is equal to mg over 2 plus mg. Uh, ooh, let me close the loop on that G there. And we have a similar situation going on in this part, like we did in part B, where uh, if you know what 1 half plus 1 simplifies to immediately, you can just jump to the end, and that's great. Good on you. Otherwise, you can take the same intermediary step by factoring out mg, and this will give you 1 half plus 1, and we can represent 1 as 2 over 2. And if you take 1 half plus 2 over 2, that results in 3 over 2. So what do we get? We get 3 over 2 lowercase mg. And that's equal to 2 thirds capital MG. Uh, we can cancel out the factors of G. And here is where I would cross multiply these uh, fractions out in front. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, 2 times 2 and 3 times 3. So we'll get 4 capital M is equal to 9 lowercase m. And if I divide both sides by 9, this tells me what I want. This tells me that lowercase m is equal to 4 ninths capital M. So if I take capital M and I throw away 4 ninths of capital M, how much is left? Uh, oh, forgive me. I worded that incorrectly. So um, I had to think about that for a moment. If we take the total weight, and what I want uh, remaining is 4 ninths in order to get an upward acceleration of g over 2, I'm trying to calculate how much I need to throw away. Forgive me. We're keeping the 4 ninths. We're throwing away what's remaining. And um, what we can do here is, <laughs> like we've done before, uh, if you haven't seen it, enough times already. Uh, factor out the m out in front. We'll have 1 minus 4 over 9 and um, we can represent 1 as 9 over 9. And so if you take 9 over 9 minus 4 over 9 we get 5 over 9. So this is equal to 5 over 9 capital M. So in order for us to have the final mass be 4 ninths capital M, we need to throw away this much, 5 ninths capital M. 
Um, forgive me if that was a little wordy to get to the answer, but that is uh, what they were looking for. Five-ninths, capital M. And uh, that does it. Thanks for watching. Take care.